Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Tiffany Benson, one part of Team Benson, and today we're gonna harvest all those cherry tomatoes, guys. We're gonna make it happen. Now guys, just a reminder, make sure that you subscribe and go over to, or subscribe to our channel and then go over to Mighty Crop and give them a follow on IG because we have our 10K giveaway. We are getting closer every day. So thank you guys for sharing and telling your friends about the channel so that we can get to our 10K subscriber goal. Now I am going to start with, I think the beefsteak tomatoes because that cherry tomato plant guys, it's so huge and I need to cut it down as well. So I think there's a lot of tomatoes on there, but I can only speculate. All right guys, so we are going to start off with all of these tomatoes. Now these ones are starting to get a little bit sick as you guys can see up there. So I do have some blossom end rot on the very top ones, but these bottom ones look really, really good. And I'm gonna come in here and pick them off. So guys, most of these are perfect. As you can see, they're perfect. These are the beef steaks, but two of them have blossom and rot. So let's talk about blossom and rot. All right, so let's talk blossom and rot. Now, why did this happen to my tomatoes? There's a hummingbird that just came really close to my face. <laughs> so, uh, this could have been a couple of different reasons, guys. Now, one, blossom and rot is usually a calcium deficiency. Now, granted, there could be a calcium deficiency in that plant, but I think it's more so actually like coming up on like a sun skull because these were at the very top of that tomato plant and some of them were sitting on the metal. So I think it's more so a sun skull than it is anything else. All right, here we have it. It's time to come in and get the last of all the red ones. And as you guys can see, it really produced a lot. So I feel like this is gonna be at least maybe 20 minutes of gathering all these, but it's time to do it. So guys, I wanted to show you how cool this looks. Now both these plants, the red runner beans and the tomato plant are dying as you can get you up closer, it is really dying in here. But this is a red runner bean entwined in the tomato plant. Isn't that cool? So I think that would be fun to kind of like see how they intermix, especially look at that one. Red runner bean and tomato. See how they kind of intermix in a season where they can be alive together. All right guys. That was probably single-handedly one of the most exhausting things I've ever done. Now, I'm gonna try and do this one-handed to show you guys, but these are the cherry tomatoes that came off of there. And there are still literally probably like another bucket full of green ones on there. Now, now comes the decision, do I leave it for like a couple more days and see if more ripen up, or do I cut the whole thing down? Now, as you can see in that trash can, I did cut about half of it. No, I won't even say half, but like a fourth, but it's still pretty big. Now, it has a lot of wildlife going on in there. Like there are some woolly aphids, and then there's a little bit of spider mites, and then there's also big giant spiders that are eating everything in there. Like when I sat down this bucket, I almost peed my pants because a big spider came out of it, and I was like, oh my God. So, I'm thinking of maybe it, it might be easier to leave it like another three, four days, let the last of the green ones ripen up and let the insects eat down some of those dead leaves or even just some of the leaves period so that then it's easier for me to cut out because just getting that trash can, that's not even like, it's probably like halfway full because there was other stuff in there too, but that was exhausting guys. Now I did take down some of the tomatoes that are a little green. You'll see that there's some clusters on there that have some green tomatoes on there too. And if you guys don't know, green tomatoes will just ripen up on your countertop, so I'm gonna do that. My neighbors have been really amazing on that fence line. 
about not spraying anything that's not organic and natural, being the case that we share a fence line and I don't want any pesticides in my garden. And so they've been really respectful about doing that. Those are my only neighbors that I really share a side with. The rest, this one goes to the street and then on that side we have a barbecue grill. So uh, I didn't want to have my dead dying tree bush be also their dead dying tree bush problem. So I did cut all the branches that were dying on their side into their fence guys I pulled out a branch that was going on their fence I felt horrible because it literally was probably like five feet long <laughs> and it was covered in tomatoes so I'll have to send them a little care basket of thank you for letting me grow my tomatoes in your yard as well here's some they're amazing all right guys so here are all the tomatoes minus the two grody ones so guess the weight, put it down below, and I am going to weigh it when I get into the house. So guys, I don't have a ton of experience with ground cherries, but someone, after watching my video, told me not to pick them off, but to only pick the ones like this that are already fallen. So what I'm doing is I'm going through and I'm just collecting all the ones that have fallen. Let's see, we have some in this pot too as well. And then that way, we don't eat any that are gonna make us sick. Because they said that if you eat them before they're fully ripened, then you can get a tummy ache. And that is not what I want. So, I'm just gonna go collect them all and see how many I can fall that are, or find that are on the ground. Now, I got a little handful of the ground cherries. So I'm actually pretty excited about that. Now these ones are really, really good. Guys, like I said, they are a little bit of a pain to kind of grow because you have to unwrap every last one of them individually. But I did wait, okay. That was super, super, super sweet. Now they were sweet yesterday, but I found one that was on the ground and the rest of it I was just picking. That one, guys, was like pure sugar. Pure sugar. Okay, all right, so that's the trick. Let it all the way completely dry out and fall off and then go in for your ground cherries. Cause generally, oh my God, that's so amazing. So, 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 so amazing. Okay, thank you to the subscriber that told me that because that's even sweeter than the last one. So guys, I'm gonna break away from my eating of ground cherries to show you something that's fun I get to pick and I'm excited about it because it's my first one of the season do you guys see it it's right back there and it's a cucumber I'm excited so guys look at this beautiful little semi wonky thing I am so excited this is my first cucumber I love cucumbers for breakfast today I am going to cut this up and eat it with my eggs not with them like together, but this will have some salt on it and it's gonna be great. All right guys, so let's talk about cucumbers. Now growing cucumbers in the Arizona summer can be a little tricky. Now if you grow them in the fall, no problem at all. You will get pest damage towards the end of it because cucumbers don't like to be cold, but the flavor of the cucumber is gonna be amazing. You're gonna have like the sweetest cucumbers in the world. Now growing them in the summertime, they can get bitter because of the heat. So what you wanna do is when your cucumber gets to the size of what it's supposed to be, like these are little pickling cucumbers, you wanna make sure that you pick them. Don't let them sit on there too long. Don't let them get overly big or anything like that because the flavor really will go bitter on your cucumber. Now the other thing you wanna do is always keep your cucumber plant covered with some type of shade cloth or some type of cloth to shield it from the direct sun of the summer heat because we are re already reaching temperatures at about 100 degrees and typically that's when they start getting pretty bitter if you have them in direct sun. So protect your cucumber plants and also pick them early and pick them first thing in the morning when the plant has the most water in them. A lot of times I'll go through and I'll water my garden completely and then I'll start harvesting things like my cucumbers and my tomatoes. So just a little tidbit. So I think that I am just gonna sit here and continue to eat my ground cherries instead of picking anything else because that's a lot of tomatoes and I gotta do something with all those. So I'm gonna go inside and I am going to uh, weigh them to give you guys a final weight. But I just wanna say 
just continuing from yesterday, remember to always love your neighbors, find something supportive that you can do to help support your community and be positive impact to your community. So, and also do your research on what's going on around the world. But until next time, grow yourselves a garden because even a small space can provide you with tons of food. Bye guys. All right guys. So the weight is four pounds, 11.6 ounces. That is nice.